Good day, everyone. Once again, I am Ms. Ludi Dines Mahinay, and this is CO1 Remedial Instruction. Today's lesson is Remedial Instruction and Listening. Let's start with this quoted statement. It is not the hearing that improves life, but the listening. So based on that quotation, I want you to have an idea or an overview that hearing and listening is different from one another. And it is the listening that helps us improve life. Let's find out how and why. What is listening? Listening skill is an ability to actively hear and understand messages in communication process. It is important to develop this skill because it helps individuals to gain information. So what is the difference between hearing and listening? Hearing is just a physical process that allows sounds to enter your ears. While listening is more than that, it involves paying more attention and improving comprehension. Listening involves hearing. We use our ears to hear and our brains to understand the messages. Listening requires focus and attention. Again, it is a skill that needs to be developed. Except for that fact, this skill is most neglected. That's why we need remediation. We often thought that everyone that hears listen, which is wrong. We automatically hear sounds, but listening is a decision. Like reading, listening needs comprehension. So our task as teachers is to help the poor listeners. We have to design a remedial listening session or program for them. Next, let us identify the factors affecting students' listening comprehension. We have internal factors and external factors. Internal factors refer to the learner's characteristics, language proficiency, memory, age, gender, background knowledge, as well as aptitude, motivation, and psychological and physiological factors. While external factors are mainly related to the type of language input and task and the context in which listening occurs. Internal factors are basically guided by the attitude of our students. Most of the time, emotional and physical condition affects the listening process. Major internal factors are problems in language proficiency. This cover problems on phonetics and phonology like phonetic discrimination and phonetic varieties. Problems in grammar and lexicological problems. If our students have the problems in structure and meaning identification or generally have poor language proficiency, they will find hard time in interpreting the messages they hear. So as teachers, we have to help them learn how to pronounce words properly, how to use intonation, and where to place stress in words and sentences. We can also provide practice on problematic sounds through listening discrimination, sound practice, liaisons, incomplete plosives, and teaching grammar. Next, poor background knowledge. Some researchers found out that the performance of our students is considerably higher if the topic is familiar than on the new one. So, those researches concluded that background knowledge in the form of topic familiarity emerges as a powerful factor in facilitating listening comprehension. Again, as remedial teachers, we have to enrich the vocabulary of our students, and we may also teach note-taking skills. Third, lack of motivation to listen. Although... We as teachers cannot control all the factors affecting students' listening comprehension. We do have a significant role on how listening skills develop, especially in remedial session. We can use that opportunity to enhance and sustain motivation. Fourth, psychological factors. The mental and emotional state of our students affect listening comprehension any mood, 
positive or negative that is too far above or below the normal condition becomes a barrier to message reception and processing. Thus, we have to make sure that our students are in normal state in the listening process. Then we have other internal factors such as age, attention span, memory span, reaction, and sensitivity. Besides internal factors, there are also some external factors which can reduce the effectiveness of listening. These factors are speed of delivery and different accent of the speakers. If the speaker tends to speak in not normal rate, whether too fast or too slow, and uses a different or non-standard English, it becomes difficult on the part of the listener to interpret the messages. So as speaker, we have to use generally accepted rate and accent in listening activities. Next, the content and the task of listening materials. This referred to the subject itself and the poor presentation techniques used by the speaker. It also disturbs the listening process. So we must repair engaging subjects and techniques for our listeners. Third, the context. This refers to the spatial temporal location of the utterance, such as the particular time and place of the speaker and the particular time and place of the listener. So developing a conducive environment for listening is a great help to our students. Next is context, another major factor influencing the interpretation of meaning. It refers to the linguistic context or the textual environment provided by the discourse or text in which a particular address occurs. Context constrains the way in which we interpret the response. So context is the physical situation or the setting, while the cortex, it is the textual environment. It is a linguistic factor that may affect listening comprehension. Considering this factor, we have to improve the inferring and predicting skills of our students. And most importantly, or an effective way also is to teach them note-taking techniques. So for Cotex, example, someone is asking you, are you coming to Baguio with us? And then you answered, I have a paper to finish by Monday. So some listeners may have difficult time in interpreting that message because of the surrounding text. So it is important to develop their inferring skills. Once again, those are the internal and external factors affecting our students' listening comprehension. So here are some of those techniques already mentioned a while ago in improving students' listening comprehension. Number one, teach pronunciation, stress, and intonation of the critical sounds of English. Next, practice sound discrimination, liaisons, and incomplete plosives. Third, recognize stressed and unstressed words. Fourth, we have to enrich the vocabulary. Fifth, teach grammar. Sixth, practice inferring information not directly stated. Seventh, improve skills in predicting. And last one, teach note-taking skills. To sum it up, again, listening is an active skill different from hearing. It should not be neglected for it is as important as the other macro skills. Listening comprehension can be affected by both internal and external factors. And as teachers, we have to develop techniques to improve our students' listening comprehension. Now, take time and enjoy planning and organizing a remedial listening session. Thank you for listening.